Good evening and welcome to Paulding High School for tonight's matchup between the Wayne Trace Raiders and the Paulding Panthers. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Scoop Miller. And Scoop, it's only been two years since Paulding's been back in the GMC, but they have an opportunity tonight to close out conference play undefeated against a big time rival. Yeah, what a great season the Panthers have had, but they're gonna have their hands full here if they wanna try to run the table against this Wayne Trace team. Comes in with a six game winning streak in this series. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game, starting first with the Wayne Trace Raiders. Well, I think for the Raiders, it's going to start with perimeter shooting. They have one of the premier outside shooters in Brooks Lockhoff, but after that, sometimes it's been inconsistent. Look for the Panthers to try to limit the touches that Brooks Lockhoff gets, and they're going to have to find somebody else to maybe step up and stretch out that Paulding defense. I think the second key tonight, Nate, is going to be the, uh, the pressure defense from the perimeter. You know, Paulding comes in, they can shoot the three so well, and I think Wayne Trace has to do a great job of getting high hands, getting some good closeouts, especially the fact that Paulding has six proven outside shooters. And let's take a look now at the Paulding Panthers. As you mentioned, it's been six games since they've come away with the victory. What do they got to do tonight? Well, it's going to start with handling pressure. Wayne Trace has hung their hat on the defensive end for so many years. They do a great job of getting points from their defense. They're going to have to do a great job of playing strong with the basketball, limit those live ball turnovers that sometimes lead to easy runouts and transition opportunities. I think the second key for the Panthers is going to be rebounding. The Panthers come in minus three in rebounding margin. Meanwhile, Wayne Trace plus three. I think that's going to be a big key. The Panthers need to establish the glass at both ends if they want to have a chance at running the GMC table this season. It is jam-packed here at the jungle tonight. Don't go anywhere. When we return, we'll have tonight's starters in the opening tip. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Paulding High School tonight. Scoreboard is sponsored by Cowser Trucking in Paulding, proudly serving the area since 1934. Starters are just about to be or be are being announced currently. Starting first with the Wayne Trace Raiders, coached by Jim Linder, 13 and 6, 4 and 2 on the season, a member of the Green Meadows Conference. And they are going to start tonight. Number 40, Kyle Stoller. Number 5, Tanner Lockoff. Number 24, Tyler Davis. Number 3, Hudson Myers. And number 20, Brooks Lockoff. Taking a look at the Balding Panthers. Coached by Brian Miller, 12-6. And, and there it is, the 6-0 undefeated record here in the GMC this year. Just the second year in the conference. They are going to start five seniors tonight. Number 23, Isaac Reeb. Number 3, Peyton Adams. Number 33, Ethan Fultz. Number two, Luke Zartman. And number five, Nick Manns. Tonight's officials, Brett Green, Lee Schaefer, and Douglas DeSluver. It is a big game field tonight in the jungle. They do it right here. Introductions, the crowd is into it. And you know, Scoop, I think this is one of those underrated things, you know, Paulding, you know, moving from the NWC back into the Green Meadows Conference, and it has revitalized this program, this town, this school, and you can feel it here tonight. You really can. This is an electric atmosphere, just what you want with the tournaments around the corner. You want that tournament-type atmosphere, and what a great transition for the Panthers back to the GMC. Only two uh, GMC championships before that, and they came back in 64 and 65. And to be able to go 6-0, clinch a GMC uh, championship in just their second year back speaks volumes what Coach Miller's been able to do with this team this season. Yeah, and, and you know, I think we haven't mentioned that yet. They are already conference champs. Tonight's just that cherry on top where they get to go for that undefeated season against a Wayne Trace team where they have a lot of history against. No question about it. You know, what a great backyard rivalry this is. You know, they call it the... Uh, the Black Swamp Bowl for the football team, and here you can see the crowd right there. Electric atmosphere, and remember, typically the GMC runs through Wayne Trace. The Raiders, winners of 31 GMC championships in their 52 years of existence, but Paul D was able to get it done this year. But if you know anything about this Panther team this year, they're not satisfied at just winning the league. They want to run the table. Wayne Trace leads the all-time series 46-13.
Paulding's last victory against the Raiders came all the way back in 2015-2016 season, and they won that one 70 to 64. It's been six straight losses trying to reverse that fortune here tonight. You're right, and that 70-64 uh, win came here at the jungle in overtime. We could have a very similar game here tonight. So tip is up, gonna be out of bounds. Has a run for the loose ball, and it will go to the Panthers, so they will have first possession tonight. Luke Zartman bringing it up for the Panthers as they get into their first offensive set. We know Wayne Trace, they like to play tough defense. Jim Linder always known for his team defense, and they like to turn that defense into offense, like to see them get a good start like that here tonight. Three-point shot on its way from the corner, and good. E Isaac Reeb to opens up the scoring with a three-pointer from the corner. There's one of those six proven three-point shooters, and here's a nice uh, defensive pick here by the Panthers. Reeb all alone one more time. Can't get that one to go. Tyler Davis comes up with the rebound. Brooks Lockoff brings it up for the Raiders. A 1,000-point scorer got that earlier this season. Averages over 20 points a game. It's Tanner Lockoff waiting for the offense to get set. Paulding. Right now out into their man-to-man -man defense. Lockoff going to go baseline up and under the basket and good. What a sweet move by the junior Brooks Lockoff. That time was able to drive baseline. A nifty uh, up-under move. Nice fingertip touch there. Dartman picked up his dribble. Got a little lost that time. Able to get rid of it. Ends up with it back. Kicks it out. Reeb. Extra pass. Now baseline drive, that one gets knocked away from Foltz as Lockoff gets it. What a play by Davis. Comes up with a big rejection. Wayne Trace uh, trying to take their first lead. Hudson Myers drops it to Lockoff in the corner. Davis back up top. Tanner Lockoff, long three-pointer. That one's not going to be good. Fight for the rebound. And we're going to have an over-the-back call on Kyle Stoller. A good position that time by Isaac Reeb down low. Yeah, what a big time play by the senior Isaac Reeb. He did everything right. He had great position, but he did not satisfy with that. He did a great job of getting a body in to the Raiders. He drew the contact, the game's first foul. Two minutes off the clock here in the opening quarter as Balding has the lead wide open underneath. Reeb getting it done from the outside and down low. Now well, that time a breakdown that Raider defense and credit Luke Zartman, uh, the senior, for spotting uh, his teammate, dropping a dime. Stoller now tries to go up and under, has that one rejected as Ethan Foltz got a hand on it. Well, Foltz leads the Panthers in block shots on the season. Adds to that total right there. Foltz a little head fake, got to the free throw line, got cut out, got cut off, excuse me, has to pass it back out. Nick Manns gets rid of it. Panthers has that one knocked away. Lockoff not able to track it down before it goes out of bounds. Right now, the Panthers doing a great job of playing strong with the basketball, eliminating those turnovers where Wayne Trace can be so effective. Sometimes Wayne Trace's best offense has been their defense this season. Man passes it out of the trap, ends up in the hands of Fultz. Fultz drops it off to Zartman, who gives it right back. Little two-man game down in the corner. Zartman for three. That one's off the side of the rim. Tracked down by Reeb and knocked out of bounds off a of lockoff. Great heads-up play and hustle by Isaac Reeb. Really was. Tremendous hustle by Reeb to extend his possession. He had no place to go but to try to throw it behind his back. He's able to knock it off a Raider. Second opportunity coming up here for Paulding. Man decides to put it on the floor himself. Right now, Paulding being very methodical on the offensive side, not trying to force anything. More than happy to take their time. Ends up with an inside shot by Fultz. That one gets rejected by Davis. Davis pushes ahead to Lockoff. Lockoff, one-on-one, -on -one, drops it off. Tanner gets it up to Davis. Davis gets it down low to Stoller. Little hesitation move by Kyle Stoller down low, but can't finish. Good defense one more time by Ethan Foltz. Uh, Foltz is so athletic inside. One of the few guys in the GMC that can match up to Kyle Stoller. Now the Panthers again. 
I like the pace that they've had on offense here. They've just moved it around, been very patient, almost have kind of lulled that Raiders defense to sleep a little bit, and that's when somebody tends to slip open underneath. They've done such a great job this season of moving the basketball, playing unselfish. That's kind of been their DNA. That's led to their success. Three-point shot on its way. Foltz can't connect. Offensive rebound down to the Panthers. Mans kicks it out. That three-point shot rattles down. Luke Zartman with the home bounce and gets the three-pointer to go. That credit Nick Mans that time coming up with the uh, rebound and then making the kick-out pass to the corner. Hudson Myers tried to drive, has to kick it out to Stoller. Stoller gets his own rebound. Lock off. Gets. Release. Good. Oh, what a find by Stoller. Inside out to Brooks Lockoff. And that was a breakdown on that Paulding defense. You cannot leave Brooks Lockoff and leave him open for a three ball. He just too uh, sizzling on the season from downtown. Three pointer on its way. Peyton Adams, he's going to be fouled. And I believe they're going to say that happened on the floor, so it'll be out of bounds. Oh, that's a big play right there. That's the uh, second foul on Kyle Stoller. And he comes in averaging north of 14 points a game, also the leading rebounder for the Raiders as well. And he'll probably have a seat here for the final 318 of this opening quarter. And there's a big switch on the floor, too, because you mentioned the size of Stoller. They bring in Kale Winans. Uh, a smaller guard, very tough, you know, very um, likes to get after that ball. He's a ball hunter for sure, but he just doesn't kind of have that size and presence that Kyle Stoller does on the inside. And with the smaller lineup, Wayne Trace will switch back to a man-to-man. -man. There's going to be a foul underneath away from the uh, basketball. Looks like that one's going to be on Brooks Lockoff. So he'll pick up his first. That is the team's third here in the corner. We're still 3.05 left to go in the first. Paulding with the inbounds. Trying to find somewhere to go with it. Schultz has it wiped away. Winans, who just checked in, takes it away. Lock off. He stops, pulls up from three, gets fouled, and it's good. Brooks lock off with an opportunity for the very rare four-point play coming from the line. And what a great defensive play by Kel Winans at the other end, who just came off the bench for Kyle Stoller. And once again, a breakdown by the Panthers defensively. They were late finding lock off in transition. Watch it right here. He's just too lethal. When he's got space to catch and shoot, and there you see him connect on the uh, rare four-point play. But just like that, Wayne Trace takes their initial lead of this contest. So it is nine to eight, Paulding eight, Brooks lock off nine, and that is the difference in the game right now. This one gets knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Paulding. Casey Agler has the basketball. He checked into the game for Paulding. Works against Lockoff up top. Tries to cross over, has to spin, gets to the free throw line. Good defense by Tanner Lockoff, and then a miscommunication that time as Ethan Foltz was trying to cut to the inside. We saw Agler think he was going to stay to the out, and it's going to be another turnover for Paulding. Well, credit to freshman Tanner Lockoff for the Raiders. That time, that's that one-on-one -on -one defensive battle in perimeter. You have to win. If you don't, you have to double team. You're going to free up one of those lethal Paulding shooters. That time, Lockoff won the battle, forces a turnover. Wayne Trace trying to stretch their lead. Tyler Davis passes open to look at three. They pass it around. He gets a better look a little bit closer. Can't get it to connect. And it is going to go out of bounds as Casey Agler had it, but it took a weird bounce as it came off the floor, ended up at his feet, and he kicks it out of bounds. Now, once again, uh, credit the hustle of Kale Winans. That was one of those 50-50 balls, and Winans got to first. He was able to kind of knock it downstairs off of Panther. And now Wayne Trace will get an extra uh, possession here via that loose ball. Kane Jones checked into the game for the Panthers. A couple of substitutions for both teams. We see Brady Miller coming in for the first time for Wayne Trace. Brooks Lockoff working against the double team, drops it off to Winings, back to Lockoff. He's been hot here in the first quarter with nine points. Feed to the inside, Davis has some contact. And that's going to be one on Kane Jones. As he had just come into the game and picks up a quick foul. Well, a nice possession that time by the Raiders, and I love the entry pass from Kale Winans. You know, the fact they're trying to really uh, 
limit the touches of Brooks Lockoff. is going to free guys like Winans up. Not that he's going to necessarily take the shot, but he's very unselfish, sees the floor so well. Tanner Lockoff for three. Somebody was going to score other than Brooks Lockoff. And it's the brother as he gets his first three points of the night. Though we talked about that in the opening, how important it's going to be. Wayne Trace has to have someone other than Brooks Lockoff step up from the perimeter. That time was his brother, the freshman. Winans with another swipe. They feed it back up to him, open in the front court. He has to kick it out. Miller has it poked away from behind. Gets the hands back on it. Lockoff, catch and shoot. And good. Brooks Lockoff is absolutely on fire. 12 points here in the quarter, and we have a timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout as Paulding is going to want to try to talk about something here. So we will step aside as well and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Nate Garlock alongside Scoop Miller. Paulding coming off of the timeout, seeing some pressure from Wayne Trace, able to get out of it. Here's Kane Jones. Find Foltz down low. Good movement to get around the defense, but can't quite finish. Going to have a tie-up. Going to have a jump ball position arrow favors the Raiders. Uh, golden opportunity for the Panthers out of the timeout. They got the look they wanted, uh, just couldn't uh, convert on the offensive end. And credit Wayne Trace. They uh, were able to get a tie up. They have the arrow. But right now, uh, Wayne Trace trying to extend a 10 0 run. And that 10 0 run came on three shots the three pointer by Tanner Lockoff, the two threes by Brooks Lockoff. Remember, he was fouled on one, converted that rare four point play. So we saw some pressure from Paulding as well. Wayne Trace in danger of that 10-second violation, able to get it ahead. Kyle Stoller's pass gets knocked out of bounds. Stoller with the two fouls checked in during the last stoppage. Well, Paulding continues to go with that 3-2 defense, although they have so many different wrinkles in it. And now looks like they're going to try to switch up maybe to a little bit man-to-man, -man, but they're really extending their pressure, trying to force some turnovers. Here's Brooke locks off. Lock off. Had that one poked away, gathered it back in, throws it away. Kane Jones thought about trying to find it and lets it go as Casey Alger, I think, thought maybe that was going to be out on them, so hustle came late. And we'll see. I don't think he touched it. He did not. It will stay with the Panthers. So almost a big mental mistake there for Paulding as Agler showed great hustle, wanted to get to that basketball. But if he had to touch that here with 28 seconds left to go, you're giving away a possession. You're exactly right. You love the hustle. But again, that was clearly going to be off of Wayne Trace. But credit Nick Mance to the defensive end. He won that one-on-one -on -one battle against Brooks Lockoff, forced Lockoff to give it up a little bit prematurely and end up turning it over in the backcourt. Now Paulie plays for the last shot here. Clock down to seven. Five seconds left to go. Panthers got to do something. Three, don't know where the clock is, has to get rid of it quickly. And Paulding misses an opportunity as they lost track of where the clock was. And that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. Brooke Lockoff has gotten off to a hot start and gotten Wayne Trace out on top. They lead 15 to 8. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back. Second quarter just about underway here at the jungle in Paulding High School as Paulding finds themselves down 15 to 8. You know, in scoop, when you can hit behind the perimeter like Wayne Trace did in that first quarter, you talked about it in the pregame. Paulding has got to find a way to run them off the line. Yeah, they have to get high hands on those closeouts. They have to know where Brooks' uh, lockoff is at all times. They've lost him three times already. And the senior, or junior Brooks lockoff, 12 big points in an open quarter. Nice start to the quarter as Nick Mans quickly gets down the lane for two. Oh, nice job there, moving the basketball, moving without the ball there by Nick Mans. And that uh, ends a 10-0 run. That uh, also ends a four-minute drought there by the Panther offense. 
10 second violation as Wayne Trace had been teetering on that line the last couple of possessions and finally Paulding able to force the turnover. Uh, great job by the Panthers. You know, that's where they're going to have to hang their hats tonight against Wayne Trace. They just have to be locked in defensively, cannot take any possessions off. And right now, uh, a good start here to quarter two. Hands goes left. Gets it in as Brooks Lockoff quickly ran baseline to try to help out with that defense. Too much contact. And Nick Manns will make a trip to the free throw line to see if he can't get the and one. I oh, watched a pretty move by Nick Manns. He realizes he's got to clear out on that backside. Lockoff comes over to help. He's a little bit late. And now Nick Manns will go for the and one. And not able to connect with Manns. That foul was actually called on Kale Winans. That is Winans first. Lockoff passes out of the double, gets it up to Winans. Winans works around in the lane, pulls up, no good. Fight for the loose ball, and it's going to end up in the hands of Paulding. And then it gets poked away from behind by Kale, and it looks like Kale's going to pick up his second foul. Well, that's a tough break. That time they had a pretty good trap scenario with Brooks Lockoff and Kale Winans, but Winans a little bit too aggressive there with the hands. And that will indeed be his second foul, the fifth on the Raiders. So right now, if you're Paulding, keep playing downhill, keep playing aggressive. You'd love to find a way to get to the uh, free throw line for the majority of the second quarter. Dale yeah, Winans had a couple of swipes defensively, able to knock the ball away in that first quarter. But that time, trying to get the extra possession cost him. Isaac Reeve, got the scoring open with a three-pointer to start the first quarter. It's been quiet since. Man's going to pull this one back out for Paulding. Adams has to go somewhere with it. Isaac Reeve gets the ball, gets it back over to Nick Manns. Manns, all the scoring here for the Panthers in the second quarter. Paulding continuing to be patient. Drive and spin off the glass, though, for Zartman. Nice move by Luke Zartman to get to the inside and get the basket. Well, that's a sweet move there by the senior Zartman. That time uh, uses athleticism. Here's Brooks Lockoff at the other end. And there's nobody more lethal shooting the ball off the dribble than Brooks Lockoff. We saw it right there. He now has 14 of the 17 points for Wayne Trace. You know, Scoop, you've seen Lockoff play a, a lot this season. When he is locked in like this, he may be one of the best scorers, not just in this county or in this area, but potentially the state. You're exactly right. The last thing you want to see as an opposing coach is his first shot go in because he seems to ride that wave of momentum. He's doing it right now. Pull up, drops it back off. Myers gets it over to Lockoff back in the corner. He resets and connects. Brooks Lockoff right now cannot be stopped. Wow, well, straight music for Brooks Lockoff, and that uh, rim is looking like a hula hoop right now. That thing was true and true. Three-pointer by the Panthers. That one's going to be off. Davis goes up high, gets the rebound. 20 to 14. Brooks Lockoff, 17 points here already. Winding, gets it to Davis. Davis, he's going to shoot from the top of the key. That one's going to be short. Loose ball ends up to the Panthers. And you've got to give Paulding credit. They have watched Brooks Lockoff go off here in this first quarter, but they've gotten close. A little bit of a run, got him within one, and they are still within two possessions. And make it one, Isaac Reeve with his second three-pointer of the game. Uh, what a great answer there by the Paulding Panthers. I love how they attack the paint. They went inside out. And again, they have so many proven shooters when they can catch and shoot in rhythm, this is a tough team to defend. Here's Davis, drops it off to Lockoff. Another handoff, catch and shoot, and Brooks Lockoff. It is just incredible what we are seeing right now. Well, right now it's Paulding 17, Brooks Lockoff 20, and the Lockoff brothers 23 in this 23-17 advantage. And nobody on Wayne Trace other than a Lockoff has scored yet tonight. And they have the six-point lead. Good pull-up jumper, Ethan Fulton. What I like seeing out of Paulding here is they are not panicking. They are seeing what's happened on the offensive side, but they are just playing their game on the other end. You're exactly right. You know, what a great possession there. They're taking high percentage shots. And talk about high percentage shots. String music again for Brooks Lockoff. Brian Miller's going to burn a timeout as they have no answer for Brooks Lockoff. He has 23 of the first 26 points. Wow, we've got a shootout here at the jungle. We'll be back on WOSN.
Welcome back to tonight's scoreboard is presented by Cowser Trucking in Paulding, proudly serving the area since 1934. And that Cowser scoreboard is getting a workout tonight, courtesy of Brooks Lockoff, as he already has 23 points. We still have 343 left to go here in the half, and he has yet to miss. And they, what's so incredible is the fact that Paulding knows Brooks Lockoff as well as anybody. He's been on the radar all week in practice. They know what they have to do, but doing it just a second thing. He's just been that good tonight and certainly playing with a lot of confidence. And right now the Raiders uh, just up seven though. So the fact that uh, he's gone off like that, you're still just a couple possessions down. No need to panic, keep playing hard. Isaac Reeve loves that corner shot. Can't connect on that one. Gonna go out of bounds, last touch by Nick Manns. That's a nice hustle play by Manns. Unfortunately, uh, he's not able to knock it off of one of the Raiders. But again, this type of hustle will keep you in games. This type of hustle will let you come back from deficits. There you see a good look at the lockoff right there. He came into the night shooting 68% uh, from the floor and over 42% from the arc. So everybody knows what he's capable of doing, but stopping him is easier said than done. Davis. Goes inside to Stoller, hands it back to Davis. Davis is going to drive, and finally someone other than a lockoff has scored as Tyler Davis drives, and he gets two on the board. Well, that's just a big-time move there by the senior Tyler Davis. He recognized that uh, he had a one-on-one. -on -one. He had that explosive first step. He's able to get to the rack. Pretty finish. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. Alger just a little bit off. Lockoff. Going to bring it up for Wayne Trace. Winans back over to Davis, back to the inside. Stoller going to go to work. Almost has it knocked away, gathers it back in. Winans going to drive, gets it back over to Stoller. Stoller hesitation move off the glass, gets his own tip. Second opportunity. This one's up, no good. And this one's going to go out of bounds. I believe it's going to be tipped out on Hudson Myers. Well, that time the Panthers dodge a huge bullet. Uh, Stoller had some pretty good looks there from ground zero. But they come up empty, and now Paulie a chance to maybe just chip away. But Nate, you know, it's really been amazing this uh, Wayne Trace run. They did it with Kyle Stoller on the bench. You know, remember, Stoller was first team GMC a year ago as a sophomore. So here you think that, uh oh, he's out of the game. Look out, here comes Paulding. Wayne Trace just took, stepped it up and notch that small lineup. And here's Hudson Myers with the steal. Brooks Lockoff, even when he can't score, still ends up finding a way, and he's going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. So that foul's going to go on number 23, Isaac Reed. That'll be his second. Well, look at the beautiful pass there from Hudson Myers and Brooks Lockoff. A great job of protecting the basketball with his body. At that time, Reed, but not happy with the call. Felt he had pretty good transition defense. But Lockoff, once again, finds nothing but the bottom of the net. He's now up to 24 points as he connects on the first of two from the charity stripe. See him make his second and apparently layups is just too close. You know, Lockoff, he's, he, he needs to be a much farther away from the basket when he takes those shots. And I'm a little surprised too, I, you know, uh, Scoop, you've been around basketball a long time, played, coached, been in almost every aspect of it. When you got a player that's as hot as Brooke Lockoff, at some point, do you just say, you know what, just keep giving it to him. Let's see how, let's see where this momentum can take us. I've been a little bit surprised the last couple times. They've gone inside, kind of haven't found ways to just let him to see if he can keep scoring. Yeah, you don't want an overcoach when you get in this situation. It, it, it's pretty easy math here. Get the ball to the guy with the hot hand, but certainly Paulding is doing all they can. Now they're not releasing off a of Lockoff. Right now they've got Agler locked in, kind of one-on-one. -on -one. Even on rebounds and loose balls, they're not leaving them. That's something they did early, and it, it came back to bite them as they did a great job of kicking it out and finding Lockoff, you know, relocate beyond the arc. Lockoff that time trying to find a little bit of space. Paulding doing a great job of closing it. Here's Carter Clemens. He's checked into the game for Wayne Trace. Has to go somewhere with it. Gets it over to Brooks Lockoff. One-on-one -on -one against Alger. Alger. Gets him out around midcourt. Here comes the double team. Hudson Myers and then was trying to get it back out to Davis. Has it taken away. Nick Manns all the way in for the easy layup. Excuse me, Peyton Adams. Peyton Adams with the two-pointer. They were going to have a foul away from the ball. I think they're going to get uh, Casey Agler. 
But again, just the uh, fourth team foul, I believe, for the Panthers. So they still have a couple to give here. And why not, especially if Lockoff gets the ball and has a dribble left. You might want to get a quick foul before he has a chance to uh, light it up one more time. 30 to 23, Wayne Trace on top, last 25 here in the first half. Kale Winans with the basketball. Wayne Trace just going to move it around the perimeter. And we're going to have a three-second call. This one's going to go against Lockoff. Boy, that's a rare call. You don't see this in this day and age. And that time, Lockoff just had one foot in the lane. A lot of times, officials will let that ride. But uh, that time, uh, he was called for the three. So that's a big break. Now Paulding can play for the last shot. I think this is big because Wayne Trace will get the ball to start the second half. So I think it's important here for Paulding. Try to make this a two-possession game. Convert here with 16.9 to go. So something on the floor. It looks like maybe some gum or something that trainer's going to come out and pick up. So just a short stoppage here. They got to make sure they get all the sticky stuff up off the floor with 16.9 seconds left to go. And this is a big possession. Two, uh, down two possessions right now, but depending on what happens here, you know, you got think you feel a little bit better with just that four-point lead going in the locker room if you can get three here. But either way, you want to make sure you come away with some points and a little momentum. Yeah, this would really be huge. You know, the fact that, you know, as good as Lockoff has been, you just can't expect him to get 25 more points in the second half. I mean, things tend to even out over time. So right now, Paulding, if you can make this a two-score game or less, I mean, you're right where you want to be. You've got an electric home crowd here uh, really pushing you on. And Wayne Trace has really been a first-half team this season. They gave up just eight points a game uh, in the first quarter of the season, which is what uh, Paulding scored tonight. But they've had some troubles in the second half closing out games. Four seconds left to go. We saw Paulding have struggle, struggle there at the end of the quarter and can't get a shot off one more time as Lockoff got one up but gets his first miss from behind the arc tonight to end the half. So after the first half of action, Wayne Trace is on top of Paulding, 30-23. to 23. We'll step aside and be back with the third quarter. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Welcome back to the jungle here at Paulding High School. Nate Garlock alongside Scoop Miller, and we're just about underway here in the third quarter. But Scoop, that first half was something else as we had we saw an incredible offensive output from Brooks Lockoff. We really did. Uh, he went off for uh, 25 points. Six for six beyond the arc, two for two inside the arc, three for three at the line. Paulding just had no answer for Lockoff. We'll see what type of adjustments head coach Brian Miller makes as his team comes out trailing by seven here to start the second half. Nice find down low. Kyle Stoller gets the scoring started, and I think you were seeing the adjustment that Paulding's trying to make as uh, Brooks Lockoff is just being guarded as tightly as he possibly can be, but that is opening up avenues for other uh, Raiders. Yeah, I remember Kyle Stoller averages over 14 points a game. He was held scoreless there that first half, but it didn't matter. Brooks Lockoff more than uh, took uh, his, fair of the, his fair share of the load. But Paulding right there where they want to be. Paulding shot 64% from the field the uh, opening half, 30% beyond the arc. They also only turned the ball over five times, yet they find themselves down. Isaac Reeb not able to connect as he had a couple of big three-pointers there in the first half. This is his first attempt here in the third quarter. And Tyler Davis has been big tonight uh, for the Raiders. He's not going to put up big staff, but what he does, he's so physical inside at both ends. He's done a great job of keeping the Panthers to one and done at Paulding's offensive end. Here's Lockoff. He spins, goes baseline, pull up jumper. That one's going to be off the back of the iron. His first miss from the floor tonight. Well, I like the matchup right now. They put Nick Mance on Brooks Lockoff. Mance, very athletic, uh, very quick. And he also can play physical, something I think they have to do to try to slow down Lockoff. There's Fultz down low. 
Works against Davis. Hesitation tries to spin back into the lane, trying to find some space. Can't get there. Tyler Davis rejects it, but ends up back in the hands of Folt. He keeps going to work and can't get it to go down. Lockoff going to push it up ahead to Stoller. Stoller for the layup, and it's good. Wow, what a great uh, pass there from Brooks Lockoff and credit Kyle Stoller. Anytime you get a big man that runs the floor, you want to reward him. Great transition look that time by Wayne Trace, all predicated by that defensive stop in the interior by Tyler Davis and Wayne Trace. Here's Zardman. He's trying to go up for the layup, has that one knocked away. It's Tyler Davis able to send it out of bounds. And once again, we mentioned it moments ago. You know, he's not a guy that's going to show up in the stat column, but he's one of those game changers. That time he makes a big defensive rejection, forces Paulding to kick it up up top here. Big man's with the basketball. Works it back into the hands of Zartman. Paulding finds themselves down 11 as Wayne Trace has scored the first four points here in the third quarter. Reeb had a little bit of an opening there, but unfortunately lost his dribble. Lucky to gather it back in. So Paulding's going to have to reset the offense. Mans, he's going to pull up for two. Can't connect. Stoller with the rebound. A uh, great job of being physical at the defense end by the Raiders. That time they kind of rerouted him, make him take a tough shot in traffic. Tanner Lockoff down into the corner. Davis can't connect. Stoller with the rebound. Has this one, looks like partially rejected. Paulding going to push the tempo up. Isaac Reeve decides to pull it back out. As Paulding one more time has an opportunity here to cut into this lead. But Zartman not able to connect there on that three-point try. Lockoff guarded tightly by Nick Manns and finally going to result in a whistle as Nick Manns will pick up his uh, first foul tonight. It will be the team's first of the half. A great recognition that time by Brooks Lockoff. We mentioned how Vance is starting to pick him up a little bit earlier in the possession, but what that does allows you to maybe go one-on-one, -on -one, try to win that one-on-one -on -one battle up front. That time Lockoff did. Vance gets whistled for the foul. Tanner Lockoff. Has to get rid of it. Brooks Lockoff gets it. Thought he might try to take the three-point try there. Decides to get rid of it. Here's Hudson Myers for three. He can't connect. Agler comes up with a rebound, but immediately has it taken away. Davis, I think, got a little too excited. Put too much on that one. And after a scramble, ends up back into the hands of the Raiders. Great job by Tanner Lockoff. First, he gets the steal. Second, the uh, offensive rebound. But there, Fultz with the rebound. Near steal again by Hudson Myers. Mance will bring it up. So Brooks Lockoff now can't connect on his last couple of tries. It's Peyton Adams can't connect on a three-point try. So both teams right now going a little bit cold offensively. So we are under four left to go in the quarter. And right now they're not only making Lockoff take tougher shots, but they're bodying up on him, something that uh, can bother him at times. So I love the adjustments from Paulding. But Wayne Trace, as I think we all know, this is an unselfish group. They're not going to just try to go through lockoff. If something else is available, they'll take it. So Coach Linder wants to take the early 30-second timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's Instant Replay, sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So Wayne Trace with the timeout. His coach Linder didn't like the look of his offense, wanted to get things reset. Yeah, I think that's a great timeout. They have not been in sync. Uh, fortunately for Wayne Trace, Paulding has not been able to really knock any shots down. But remember, without uh, Brooks Lockoff the first half, Wayne Trace just one for nine from the floor, one for three from beyond the arc, and the rest of the team did not shoot a free throw. So Paulding do, doing what they have to do, limit the touches of Brooks Lockoff, make somebody else step up. And Tyler Davis does just that as he drives all the way in for two. Well, that's the second time we've seen that move tonight. The first one was the only uh, Non Brooks Lockoff basket in the first half, and Tyler Davis delivers one more time. Huge bucket out of the timeout. Little give and go this time to Adams, kicks it back over to Reeb. Reeb has to go somewhere with it, looking for an outlet. Had it knocked away, but ends up back into the hands of the Panthers. Agler, he's going to try to drive through some contact, going to have a foul on the floor, but basketball will stay with the Panthers. 
Well, great job by Wayne Trace in the half court. You know, I know uh, they got whistled for the foul there on Brady Miller, but Brady Miller was really locked in. All five guys doing a great job of forcing Paulding maybe a couple steps further out to run that offense. That makes it difficult. You've got to make an entry pass six feet beyond the arc. Agler trying to drive one more time. Comes up a little bit short. Skyler Stoller gets the rebound, out. rebound, pushes it up to Lockoff. Lockoff through some traffic, can't connect, tried to go for the tip in, and he's going to get fouled, make another trip to the free throw line. Yeah, that's a controlled tip, so that will be a shooting foul here for Brooks Lockoff. And credit Lockoff, you know, that time they, they ran out of it on him right there, but look at that hesitation crossover move. That's a scoop shot he'll normally finish, but he stays right there with the rebound. Now he's heading back to the stripe. First one up and in, so he has his first point of the second half. Now up to 26 points. More importantly, stretches that Wayne Trace lead to 14, their largest of the night. Second free throw on its way, and it rattles down. So Wayne Trace on top, 38-23, 2.30 left to go here in the quarter. Agler working against Dolar up top. Paulding has yet to score here in the third quarter. Here's Fultz. Works against Davis around the free throw line. Tries to hand it off. Has to get gap to has to get it back. Excuse me. Turnaround jumper, no good. Winans comes up with the rebound. Big rebound there by Winans. One in there with the big boys. Comes down with it. Lock off. Trying to find a little bit of space. Paulding playing great defense, not giving him any room. Tyler Davis, though, is going to come wide open. He can't connect. Rebound ends up in the hands of Paulding. Agler now brings it up for the Panthers. He works against Winings. Gets back into the lane. Tries to dump it off to a cutting Reeb who is running baseline. But a great job by Tyler Davis to stick his hands in there and take that one away. Well, Wayne Trace continues to win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter. The, one of the reasons that Wayne Trace uh, only has one foul here in the second half. Stoller with the pull-up jumper. And that one's no good. Foltz comes up with the rebound. Kane Jones going to try to get all the way into the basket. They're going to say no. No made basket. Foul came on the floor. No continuation. And that is going to be a foul on Brooks Lockoff. It'll be his second. Oh, watch it right there. You see Kane Jones just kind of put a burst of speed on. That time the foul happened on the drive, so they will take it out on the side. But that's what Paul D needs to get back into it. They cannot just move the ball around the perimeter. They have to attack the bucket, try to play inside out. That'll free up those uh, three-point shooters. But until they can put pressure on that Wayne Trace defense, this man-to-man -man has really turned the tide here for the Raiders, who have outscored Paulding 8-0 here in the first seven minutes of quarter three. Foltz with the big move on the inside. Winans trying to draw the offensive foul, doesn't get the call. And Paulding finally on the scoreboard here in the third quarter. Uh, great job by Fultz. Wayne Trace will have a tough time matching up with him inside. He's so athletic. They need to maybe get him some more touches in the paint. And again, he's a guy that can free up that outside shooting game. Hudson Myers trying to get something inside. Nothing there. Kicks it out. Tanner Lockoff can't connect on a three-pointer. And Paulding with the offensive, re or excuse me, defensive rebound, trying to see if they can't make it two baskets in a row. Nice drive by Manns off the side of the rim, though. Gets his own rebound, goes back up, and gets it to go. And again, that's what they need to do, attack the rim, play downhill, and that's what Nick Manns will do. He's a guy that scored double figures a year ago, and uh, he's a guy that can really maybe put some more pressure that Wayne Trace defense. And they were going to have a foul up front here. Nick Manns going to get called. That's his second. It'll be the team's second here of the half. As you can see, Paulding trying to get a little bit more aggressive, trying to create some possessions. Well, big possession right here for Wayne Trace. Paulding will get the ball to start to quarter three, so they need a stop here. Tanner Lockoff works against Reeb, gets it over to Stoller. Final two seconds. Tanner Lockoff lets one fly at right at the buzzer, but comes up a little bit short. Third quarter is over. Wayne Trace still on top. They're going to lead going into the fourth, 38-27. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN.
Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Couser Trucking in Paulding, proudly serving the area since 1934. Fourth quarter about underway here at the jungle in Paulding. Wayne Trace in full command, but Paulding there right at the end of the third quarter, able to close the gap just a little. Their defense, I thought, did an excellent job in that third quarter. Unfortunately, the offense I had no answer for that aggressive man-to-man -man pressure. But remember, you know, Wayne Trace, they've had an excellent season. They're not liking where they're at in the GMC. Four and two, no chance to catch Paulding, who's six and zero. Oh. But uh, Wayne Trace has five tough losses on the season where they just haven't closed things out. You know, they don't have that deep a bench, and you wonder if they might wear a little bit. Remember, Wayne Trace has a three-point loss to Van Wert, a one-point loss at Hicksville, a two-point loss at the buzzer to Crestview, a one-point loss at Kaleida. And you saw it uh, a couple weeks ago, that two-point uh, loss to Tiffin Columbian at OG. But uh, right now, they'd love to find a way to close this thing out. And as we start the fourth quarter, a quick foul by Hudson Myers working against Nick Mans. And that'll be Myers' first. It's the team's third. So both teams with plenty of fouls to give here in the fourth. Just a four-point quarter for the Panthers, but an eight-point quarter for Wayne Trace. So Paulding's defense definitely stepped up their game there in the third quarter and got the stops that they needed. Now they just need to get the offense going. Yeah, we're seeing signs of life. Nick Manns has drawn a couple fouls here. The last couple possessions, taking it strong to the rack. Here comes Kane Jones trying to do the same. A little bit too much on that one, but Fultz was there for the rebound. Fultz with the left-hand hook, and it goes. Oh, big-time play by Fultz. That's a rebound he had no business getting. That was just one of those hustle plays. Great finish with the left hand. The lead down to single digits now here as we near the seven-minute mark of this contest. Stoller inside, works against Mans, comes up a little bit short, tip in, no good. Fight for the loose ball, Tyler Davis gets it. But then an over the top foul by Luke Zartman from behind to send Davis to the free throw line. Well, this is where Wayne Trace has been so good all season. We talked about in the pregame, Nate, how other than Lockoff, they've been inconsistent from downtown. But there you see the hustle plays. They do such a great job of getting points in the paint. And that time, the first of two by Tyler Davis is going to rim out. So right now, the lead will remain in single digits at nine. Davis on the season, just 43% shooter. So that's something to maybe uh, keep in mind as this thing wears on. Maybe Hackashack coming up. Uh, neither team really plagued by foul trouble there. Davis able to connect on the uh, back end to get the lead back up to 10 here for the Raiders. A little bit of a line drive shot that time, but it goes down for Davis. Mans works against Myers. He's going to drive. Going to get fouled. Going to go to the free throw line for two. And again, I like what Nick Mans is doing here down the stretch. He understands that Pauly wants to not only attack that Wayne Trace de defense, try to get to the line, but it's also a way to maybe lengthen the game out a little bit. And there you see the senior line up. The first one's going to be off the mark. So the lead still in double figures at 10. Manso in the season, just 57% from the stripe. Second one up and in. Man's able to make the adjustment, goes one for two from the line, makes this, pushes this back to a nine point deficit. Tanner Lockoff hands it off. Brooks for three. That one's going to be no good. Stoller with the rebound, put back good. Now, once again, points in the paint, and uh, what a hustle play by Kyle Stoller to fight for position on that backside where most rebounds will be had. He now has six points all in the second half. That gets the lead back up to double digits. Nick Manns works against Myers down low, has to kick, get rid of it. Kane Jones, he's going to pull up for three. Jones no good. Tyler Davis goes up, gets the rebound. And White Trace continues to dominate the glass at both ends at halftime. Paulding had just eight rebounds to 13 uh, for Wayne Trace. Davis down low to Stoller one more time. Stoller, nice spin move to his left. Able to get that one in after creating some space. That's just a big time move. Not many guys can get that bucket to go when you have the 6'4 Ethan Fultz on you. But that's how good Stoller is. No secret uh, he was first team GMC a year ago and certainly Reason for that, that's a big time move. He now has eight second half points. Zarman with the drive, able to split the defense, gets that one to go for two. 
As Paulding right now needs buckets, and they need them quickly. So right now they're just really one run away from getting back into it, but they continue to attack the rim. Eventually that's going to free up those outside shooters. But right now Wayne Trey is going to be very patient here, trying to uh, work the clock here. Tanner Lockoff tries to drive, goes into a host of Paulding Panthers. Can't get the shot to go down, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw line as it looks like it is going to be on Luke Zartman. So that will be his second. It's going to be the team's fifth foul here in the half. Uh, great job by the freshman again, attacking the rim, playing downhill. Then the first of two up and in for Tanner Lockoff. Lockoff just five for seven on the season till that one right there. He's now seven for nine. Wayne Trace going to burn a full timeout. So Wayne Trace wants to talk about it. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll step aside as well, and we'll be back on WOSN. There you see a look at uh, Wayne Trey scorekeeper Gus Davis. It was 42 years ago in this uh, rivalry between uh, Paulding and Wayne Trace that uh, he was the difference. He scored 28 points in a 64-58 Raider win. And he's been a part of that Wayne Trace program for so long. He was a head coach for the girls for many years. He's kept the book for so many years. That guy's an encyclopedia as far as Wayne Trace basketball is concerned. So Wayne Trace took the Metzger Financial Services timeout as Coach Leonard wanted to get his team, make sure that they were set here for this final stretch as we are under five to go in the game. Agler works against Davis, gets it up top to Manns. Manns works against Winning. Winings, nice defense. He has to get rid of it. Three-pointer by Casey Agler. And that's what Paulding needs if they want to get back in this. Tremendous possession. They went inside out. They're still attacking the paint. They got the nice kick out. And this is the Paulding team that can hit the three. What a move by Davis one more time as he uses that left hand, splits the defense, parts the C there. Big bucket there after the three ball for the Panthers. The big man wasted no time getting an answer for the Raiders. So quickly gets into the lane. Here's Zartman. A little turnaround shot, no good. And Davis going to come up with the big rebound, going to be fouled by Ethan Fultz. Uh, Davis has been awfully huge tonight. And again, when you're trying to make a comeback, you have to get those second chance opportunities. And Davis just not allowing that to happen tonight. So that's another big rebound by the senior. And that's going to be the sixth foul on the Panthers. So from here on out, Wayne Trace will be in the bonus. So far tonight, Wayne Trace, eight of nine from the free throw line. So a dangerous game Paulding's going to have to play as they are out of fouls to give. But Paulding needs to find ways to stop this clock. They got to get defensive stops. They got to find some ways to score quickly. Yeah, I think Paulding's going to need to get some points for defense, uh, look for them to extend things a little bit, try to get some traps in the backcourt near half court. But Wayne Trace has been awfully good. What a pass there from Kyle Stoller to Brooks Lockoff. And again, everybody overplaying Lockoff. That allowed that backdoor scenario to take place. Stoller comes up with the steal, pushes the head to Lockoff, and quickly chases it down and gets it off the glass. That was a difficult layup as Stoller had thrown that a little bit too far. But Lockoff, with that athleticism and that skill, able to get it in for two. Yeah, those last two buckets, uh, he passes Wayne Trey scorekeeper Gus Davis for points against Paulding with 31 now. But again, this is an unselfish Raider team. You know, they just get the ball to the guy that's open. They typically look for the guy that's got the hot hand. And obviously, that's been locked off here tonight. Hudson Myers just takes it away. Going to look to go all the way in himself. Going to get fouled and go to the free throw line as Isaac Reeve tried to time it up, but was a little bit late with the contact. Well, that time it looked like Reeb was anticipating the pass back to uh, Lockoff. Watch it right here, but uh, Myers recognizes he's slow getting there, so he takes it all the way in there. And now uh, Hudson Myers, who's a 38% free throw shooter of the line, did not look like it right there. That one uh, drew and through, 
And again, Wayne Trace had just not taken their foot off the accelerator tonight. They continue to play hard. There's still enough time, but right now, if you're Paul in, you just run out of margin for error as this lead is swelled to 17 points. That one rims out from Myers into the hands of the Panthers. Agler over to Foltz, back to Agler. He's going to try another three-pointer. That one's going to be no good. Hits the cable above the backboard, so it'll go back to Wayne Trace. And that's how good this Raider defense has been tonight. You know, it's one thing giving up a three attempt. That time, that's a three attempt that's probably six, seven feet beyond the arc. Jimmy Leonard going to burn a 30-second timeout here for the Raiders. So Coach Linder wants to talk about it again with a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. Lots and lots of basketball going around the all around the area as well as WOSN has a lot of big games here coming up this weekend. Saturday, Coldwater, Delphi St. John's. Delphi St. John's with a fabulous freshman guard. Fun to watch. That's going to be a good game. Shawnee against this Wayne Trace team tomorrow night. That's one's going to be a good one as well. And then Lexington, Ottawa Glendorf. Ottawa Glendorf in a battle tonight against Defiance for the WBL. Taking a look at the upcoming schedule here over the next week, Western Buckeye League wrestling at Elida, Lipsick, Delphus Jefferson girls for the NWC championship, and then Wednesday, USV and Allen East. So lots of big games with a lot on the line still here to play as we get close to the close of the regular season. We talked about Wayne Trace in tight games. has had a tough trouble closing things out, but right now I don't think anybody anticipated a 17-point spread in either direction for these teams tonight. There's a rare turnover by Wayne Trace. That time they had Stoller isolated on the backside, a little bit too much mustard on the pass, a break for Paulding. They'll bring it up here just under the three-minute mark of this contest. That's one of those times where being unselfish might have been a bad thing as Tyler Davis was open, could have got the shot off, decided to try to get his teammate. And it goes back to the Panthers. Reeb resets his feet, decides to get rid of it. As Paulding right now can't take too much time off the clock. They got to get shots up. Adams with the corner three. Peyton Adams, he now has five on the night. As Paulding has to find ways here to get the basketball back quickly. Nice job by the Panthers. They made a couple extra passes. And there's an extra pass from Tanner Locke off to Hudson Myers. And a nice finish by Myers. And once again, Wayne Trace just seems to have an answer every time Paulding comes down with a big hoop. Adams going to try a three-pointer from the other side, and he connects. Peyton Adams coming a little bit of a live here in the fourth quarter. Well, again, they're trying to speed things up a little bit. They're starting to shoot with confidence from downtown, something we've seen them do all season long. Wayne Trace now, right now trying to play a little game of keep away, milking this clock. Hudson Myers gets baseline, goes through contact. Can't get that one to go down, but he'll make his second trip to the free throw line tonight. Well, I'd like to have seen that foul a little bit sooner that time by the Panthers. They waited too long, and now Hudson Myers will shoot two shots rather than a 1-1. One -one. They also had a chance to foul Tyler Davis earlier in that possession. And Davis uh, you know, has only shot 43% on the season. Of course, Myers, as we just mentioned, has been below that 38. So right now, if you're Paulding, every second's going to matter. You want to try to take advantage of the fact that Wayne Trey still has to shoot one more one and one but uh, you'd rather not foul a Brooks Lockoff or a Kyle Stoller. At that time, both free throws come up empty, so Paulding pushes up, trailing by 13. See what they try to come up with here. Kane into the middle of the lane, high off the glass. That one's no good. Stoller comes up with a big rebound. Oh, great job by the Raiders, just not allowing second chance opportunities. And uh, that would have not only cut the deficit to 11, but allowed the press to be set up. Hudson Myers not able to connect on the layup as Alger comes up with the rebound. Casey Alger gets rid of it. Kane Jones works against Davis. 115 left to go. They got to try to score quickly. Panthers right now got to find a little bit of urgency. Right now, great closeouts with high hands, making it tough to hit the three. Kane Jones, and this is what Paulding needed. They need to score and get some points with the clock stopped as Kane Jones does just that with the and one opportunity. Now, this is how Kane Jones has played this season when I've watched the Panthers. You know, he's a young guy, he's a sophomore, 
He's very confident at the offensive end, does a great job of taking it to the rack. And now looking to convert that free throw rim out. Looks like Fultz will track it down. Fultz with a huge offensive rebound. Can't get the layup to go in, kicks it back out. Three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be off. Falls into the arms of Stoller. Under a minute left to go. Wayne Trace with the 11-point lead. Davis gets it over to Tanner Lockoff. Lockoff gets cut off, hands it to Brooks. Lockoff, he lays it up with the right hand. Oh, that's going to be a game set match as Lockoff is able to score again. He now has 33. They had a chance to foul in the backcourt. Casey Alger makes a two-pointer. Alger now has five points. Brooks Lockoff weaves through some traffic, gets down into the corner, pulls it back out with 20 seconds left to go. All right now, it looks like Wayne Trace is content to just let this one run out. And Paulding's going to let him do the same as well. The bench says stay off, no fouls. And Paulding is going to fall to Wayne Trace, 56-45. Wayne Trace can't win the conference, but they do come in and take away that undefeated record from the Paulding Panthers. Wayne Trace wins 56-45. We're going to step aside, and when we come back, we'll be back with the Stolly Hustle Award winner. We'll be back on WOSA. Welcome back to Paulding High School. We're being joined by Coach Linder and Brooks Lockoff. And Coach, congratulations, a big victory tonight. You know, uh, always nice to come on the road and win conference games. It, it never gets old, never gets old. And our kids, this is a big rivalry game for our kids. You know, it's seven miles down the road, kind of like a high State Michigan game. And uh, our kids were, you know, we let a couple GMC games slip a little bit early in the year, and we really wanted to come in here. And they, Paulding was undefeated, and this was one of our, our, our marked games we wanted to make sure we took care of. Tournaments right around the corner. You guys have had some close losses this year. What do games like this come when you're able to come into a, a rivalry, a gym, um, on the road, and you guys come away with a big victory to close out games the way you did tonight? Well, you know, we, we bumped our schedule up a little bit, and we knew we had a chance to lose those games or win those games, and we were in all, every one of them. And uh, we thought it would help us in tournament, and we thought it would help us prepare us for games like this. So we told our kids eventually, you know, it's going to come around our way, and tonight it kind of did. You know, it's always got to be easy when you have a player who can score the way that Brooks Lockoff can score, especially the way that he did it tonight. And, Brooks, at certain point tonight, we talked on the broadcast, did that basket just look like a huge hula hoop to you? Because it seemed like you just could not miss. Yeah, it felt huge. Just seeing one go in and see the next go in, that's all I needed to see. So, so when you guys were coming off of this, uh, they obviously changed up their defense. They were playing you really tight. When those adjustments come to you and you realize, you know, is it one of those things where you're like, I, I just want to see how long I can go without before I <laughs> before I miss, or is it okay, are you all right with just stepping aside, playing that decoy, and letting other guys like Tyler Davis go after as he did tonight? Coach always tells me to, they're gonna guard me tough to just become a great passer, so that's what I try to do and try to do that tonight. And you definitely did that tonight. It was an extremely uh, impressive performance there in the first half. It was fun to watch, and it was a fun game overall, Coach. Thank you guys for the time. We appreciate you Thank joining you. us. Appreciate it. So we're going to be rejoined here by Scoop as we are going to take a look at tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner. You can check out the highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And it was a pretty easy decision tonight. Brooks Lockoff, a very deserving winner. Oh, he really is. What an incredible performance by the junior tonight. 25 points in the first half alone. He ended with 33, but he had an all-around game. His defense was stellar. But again, that hoop looked awfully big the first half. Six for six from beyond the arc. Two for two inside the arc. Four for four just inside uh, the first half there. But again, all-around performance, and they needed it as this was a party team that's had a tremendous season. Their only GMC loss of the year comes tonight here at the Jungle. So not a bad constellation prize if you're the Paulding Panthers. You know, obviously, they'd have liked to have the victory. they like to finish the season undefeated. But even coming away with the loss, they still take home the conference title. Yeah, nothing's going to take away that conference title. The first GMC title since 1965. You have to go back to 1999, the last conference title for this boys program uh, when they were in the Northwest Conference. So, again, they've got a lot to be proud of. Uh, they're disappointed in the outcome tonight, but they also know the big part of the season just around the corner as a tournament just a week away. 
So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Paulding High School. I'd like to thank our entire crew, everybody working in the truck, working the cameras. We appreciate everything you guys do every single night for us. One final time, the Wayne Trace Raiders come into the jungle and knock off the Paulding Panthers. For Scoop Miller, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in and have a great night, everybody.